Eric. Good morning. Nice to meet Good you. Good to see you. Welcome to McRae Studios. Thank you very much. And you said that you were going to clean up. Your yes. studio is very neat and tidy. What did it look like before that? Uh, no comment. <laughs> this is a, a range of works that I create, my mixed media collages, my acrylics on canvas, acrylics on paper, um, different themes and series that I have worked on. I uh, tend to work in uh, on themes such as jazz, iconography, uh, African American culture, North Carolina imagery. So I kind of have a range of style and imagery I move back and forth through, but it's kind of fundamentally all brought together by my use of color. I use color to communicate uh, emotion as well as uh, the spirit of the individual. On two ends of my studio are large scale collages. And this one is called Buddy's Pride and Joy. My grandfather was a farmer in uh, Roberson County. So this kind of addresses uh, my heritage as a North Carolinian, even though I was born and raised in Washington, D.C. And from my explorations and travels through North Carolina, I'd always see these old tobacco barns that initially I hated when I came here as a city kid. And I grew to understand what they represented in the history and, and realize how beautiful they were. And then I would see folks who would, uh, folks, who would adorn. Folks, <laughs> uh, we're in folk, North Carolina. Yeah, folks who would adorn these uh, tobacco barns with different kinds of old signage. Once again, icons, Americana. What do you call this collection here and what's the theme? Well, my, my heart series, I guess that's the easiest title. Um, I had, my initial exhibition was called 100 Hearts. And what I wanted to do was take an icon that people are immediately familiar with, but then show it in a fashion they never seen it before. So what I've done is woven uh, images of things I painted in the past, such as this Krispy Kreme or my jazz themes, uh, uh, some pop art imagery like Mickey Mouse, uh, the sunflower images, which were inspired by my mother. And all these things I've kind of woven into these pieces. Uh, initially there was 100, and then uh, before you know it, I had painted over a period of time about 200 of these. I had an exhibition at North Carolina Central's museum, and they had a, uh, a retrospective of my career. And uh, Dr. Rogers there titled me a contemporary modernist. Well, then after I read the book that he wrote about my, my contribution to art, I understood what he was saying, that basically the work that I produced was all influenced by the works of artists between the mid-1800s to the 1960s. And that was considered the modernist period. So the range of works I produced kind of moved back and forth through those different themes and subjects and styles and impacts uh, on the art world. So I use all those things I've educated myself with as vehicles, as tools to communicate ideas. So if I'm painting a jazz musician, I'm going to paint him in a fashion where you hear that music, you can see the invisible, you're going to feel that music, you're going to hear that music. I primarily work in acrylic paint. Uh, it's fast, clean, it's efficient. Uh, it's, it's, it's versatile. It does everything I need it to do. It, it's, it's like magic to me, you know. It, it just, it's just wonderful. Robert Motherwell said the intelligent artist keeps the history of art in their head. So in some ways, I've kind of filed away all these images, all these concepts, they're in my head. And that's a lifetime journey of reading, education, self-education, formal education. I have a degree in art. I've studied art. I've worked professionally as an artist for a good portion of my life. Uh, it's my vocation, my, uh, my great obsession, my calling in life. It's what I am. It's what I do. Right now, I'm using the end of the brush as a drawing instrument. So now, this goes scraffito. The Italian term. Anyway, you're scratching back into the paint and I'm, you're seeing the layers of things beneath the, the wet paint I applied. So now I'm kind of adding that, that, what you call that sizzle. So now what I'm doing is adding these marks into the wet paint. So we get the sizzle. Yeah, that's the sizzle. <laughs> <laughs> One day I was sitting home, uh, some voice came to me and spoke to me. It says, go get some paint, some brushes, some canvas, and start painting. And later found out it was God speaking to me. So 
I got the canvas. I got the uh, paint and the brushes and started painting. And uh, the first painting that I did was called Inspiration. I did the top portion in about a month and the bottom portion, which is called Kissable, I did it in about a week's time. The pictures of my wife. When I finished it, I started crying with a lot of joy. It was almost like it was something that was instilled in me. I realized then that God had instilled a gift in me. LeGrant's paintings are wonder-worthy. Considering he started at the age of 40, never received any formal training, and has been painting for a relatively short period of time. This is Man Cave, and it's the 2013 Professional Artist Category winner at the North Carolina State Fair. Um, they all teach me. The, all my paintings teach me something. And the, sometimes I get a really detailed spiritual message. In this one, I think the message that was speaking to me is that I could do something. Man Cave is, shows uh, an old home place. It's my grandma's old kitchen, but the men always had a spot in that kitchen that they uh, sat back and they had conversation and they talked about different things that was going on and over a nice game of whether it be checkers or um, cards or whatever. But the pieces, they kind of intermingle. If you go on the back side of that barn, this is the dirt road that leads to that house right there. The idea, or the dirt road is going to infinity, pretty much. It's called, you know, no looking back. So this place that we're looking back, you know, is, you know, everything that we had to let go, you know, things from the past. Uh, when I took this photograph, there was a um, image that came to me, and it was this image right here. The, the dirt road, it showed me all of that. And I had these people facing me. And I, I said, everybody with hats on, I said, y'all turn around, I want to take your picture. My brother was like, oh, I know where this is going. <laughs> and so they all stood there and they was taking the picture. And something said, tell them to turn around. And I said, y'all turn around. And when, I, when they turned around, I took the picture. It was almost like, Phew. I saw this right here. And it said, not no looking back, no looking back. This piece is called The Storm, and this, is the, this represents uh, you either going in a storm, you're in the middle of a storm, or you're coming out of a storm. Uh, and my focus on this piece was breast cancer, uh, and that's the reason why I have the, the ladies, they're praying, and they're praying themselves through this storm. The ladies in the, in the, in the painting are uh, the um, dancers at our church. And so I took the, them actually ministering and put it on canvas and kind of brought it to life. So yeah, so I get a lot of, uh, this is a high inspiration piece. You've done all this in six years. In six years, yes. Not my gift, it's God's gift. <laughs>
It's a winning combination that has twice earned him recognition at the Pastel Society of America International Art Exhibition. A third win will qualify Richard as a master artist. This was my one that kind of put me on the map, you know. What's it called? Between Us. And who's in it? Uh, this is my youngest, my oldest daughter, Baja, and my nephew, Montez Jr. Richard appreciates his talent, which has earned recognition, awards, and distinguished commissions, like his portrait painting of George Henry White, the first African and Native American congressman after the Civil War. It hangs in the Edgecombe County Courthouse. In a lot of my pieces, I have a lot of symbolism. This piece is called What the Future Holds. There's a hand here that represents God, family, community. And then in the signs it says, if you can imagine, you can achieve it. If you can dream it, you can become it. And the wind blowing represents obstacles we face in life, but we gotta keep pressing forward. And then I have them above the clouds because the sky is not the limit. My chapter series is young people in the forefront, you know, uh, aspire to be like the trailblazers who came before them, like Jackie Robinson, Muhammad Ali, um, Athea Gibson, and um, it's just that they understand what those people went through and what they have done for society. This is a piece that I consider that my dad and I did together. Um, I have his fingerprints here because we had talked about doing a piece together, um, but he passed away before I had a chance to do that, so I had his handprint. Um, put on uh, a piece of paper, and then I drew around the, his, hand, his fingerprints. This is my neighbor, uh, Mr. Uh, Reverend Isaac Robinson, and he um, was actually sitting on his porch uh, right before I was going to a show in New Orleans, and I saw him sitting there, and I was like, man, that's a painting right there. Um, and so I took out my um, telephoto lens and I took a picture of him and then I asked him could I do a painting of him because I wanted to do a piece to um, to commemorate President Obama's inauguration. I drew him and then I uh, put an inauguration ticket in his hand and then I went and found an old house um, down in Bethel, North Carolina and then I drew him in front of the house and I gave him the house number 44 because President Obama is the 44th president. And Mr. Robinson, he also is a veteran and he lived through the civil rights movement. And I did this piece um, because I knew that a lot of artists were gonna do paintings of President Obama. And I wanted to do something that represented the people that came before him that allowed him to be in the White House. And so I always like, like I said, I always like to do pieces that honor people who came before us, you know, that made a difference and made it a lot easier for, for me and others.